So um, the big standout feature for me is um, technology. 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 When I started practice, you know, we had telex machines, we had snail mail. But today, with this device, you know, and the speed at which we're expected to operate in terms of client expectation, uh, you know, text messages, group forums, uh, social media, you know, conversations, emails, you know, all of that actually have uh, ratcheted up the game and um, the expectation. Now, clients expect me to reply on, on WhatsApp immediately, right? They see two ticks and then they're like, hey, why didn't you respond? And I'm like, I'm, I, you just sent it one second ago, right? I need to think about this. So that's, that is uh, one aspect of the technology. At that time, uh, Obama was running for president. His catch cry was, yes, we can. So I remember showing that when I was making presentations uh, to the my fellow judges from West Malaysia. And the other catch cry that we have, we have is the future is here, right? We don't we don't we say that we don't look to the future. We said the future is here, and that's the mindset we had in preparing uh, what we need to do. Unless we embrace technology, we're going to be left behind, and that's what we did. Today, court proceedings are conducted over Zoom. Now, as we are getting more and more into it, I feel the process of preparing for an online hearing has become even more elaborate. You know, you don't only do what you did in the offline days, now there are more things you have to prep for the online because um, the medium sometimes doesn't encourage volume or complexity. You have to keep breaking it down and making it easy. And there's a danger in that because not everything's easy. I think there, there are pros and cons to that as well because sometimes you just can't beat the face-to-face -face interaction. But at times, e-hearings can be very helpful as well because it, it saves a lot of time and commuting back and forth. And then, of course, the other thing is that you can be interactive, right, through Zoom with judges, with lawyers. Now, that is an incredible development because you can sit as I did this morning. I just sat there and listened to the judges and interacted with them in a way that I'm interacting with you in a very conversational style because both are seated. There's not one person who's standing up on, on a lectern, at a lectern and, uh, you know, delivering something which everybody's focused on. When you are a first-year lawyer, of course, you are learning the ropes, honing your legal skills, learning how to draft properly, to conduct proper research and to make sure that you have everything in order and to remember all the, the, the things that would seem very new because it, it wouldn't be something you would have learned yeah, in, a, in a law school, right? So those were the initial challenges and as you progress, there are new things as well because you will be managing people as well as your own, own matters, um, teaching your juniors. Now, how do I cope with um, multifaceted pressures or multi-stresses, particularly in the workplace? It's about uh, harnessing the power of focus, and that means just being absolutely present uh, in the given time to apply your mind to solve that particular problem before you. And then when you unlock that, you move on to the next one. I wish I could say that I do this 100% of the time, but nope. The truth is that you know you do get distracted. You're not always 100% focused, but this is this is essentially what I try to do. Law used to be a lot more gentle. Law used to be a lot more civilized. The new lawyers would have a chance to grow into their roles, and it would be a lot better for it. Nowadays, they're being thrown into the fire immediately. And that's thanks to technology. The thing about technology is it also makes clients become amateur lawyers because before a client comes to see you, the client may 
research the law and learn stuff that has no relevance to the client's case. But the client will nonetheless come to you to say, oh, I think you should do this, I think you should do that, and so on. I don't think as a legal industry, we can stop that from happening to lawyers. It's going to happen. So what we can do is we can adjust ourselves, our own expectations. We have to stop being top-down. We have to stop being so prescriptive. We have to accept that when the client comes in, the client is now going to want to talk to us on a more equal footing. Artificial intelligence is, is coming. The question for me would be, where does the human play a role after that? Because it can come into documentation. That's very easy, right? It can come with gathering information. So what's going to be left for the humans, right? That, that's, that's an open question. I have no doubt in my mind, right? One day, the artificial intelligence machines get so smart that they're able to write submissions for you. And I think they're doing now in the sense that if you fit in whatever, let's say you fit in your statement of claims, uh, a statement of defence, I think now the machine can tell you what area of law is it. It may come to a stage the, the machine will write a submission for you and set up the questions you ask the other side. I have no doubt about that. I believe that change is the only constant, so it's something that you you have to face anyway. And don't be afraid of the changes. Take one day at a time and immerse yourself in whatever you are doing. Try your very best and don't give up. Wake up the next day, go to work, try your best. If you fail, try it again, you know, work harder. That's it. So that's the main difference, that the technology is different now. It changed the way not just society operates, but the way um, lawyers think about stuff. The new way has to be, this is your legal problem. I'm going to, number one, be a human being and hear you out. Because the one thing the internet cannot do is to be a listener, to be another human being that can hear you out, relate to you, and give you human responses. That's what a lot of clients also need. When they come and see a lawyer, sometimes it's a business dispute, and those are very chop-chop. This person owes me this amount of money, and I want it back. Here's the contract. Very easy to resolve. But most of the time, the person who comes to the lawyer is suffering from the results of the dispute, which is a little bit of trouble, a little bit of Regret, what did I do wrong? How do I do better next time? A little bit of, I want you to give it back to the other side. And a little bit of, can you just sit with me and just let me process all this? That's going to be our role.